प्रणाम गुरुजी प्रणाम वाणी राजदीप प्रणाम प्रणाम आदित्य प्रणाम गुरुजी प्रणाम All right. We shall start our today's session. Uh, so I request all of you kindly mute your microphone so that uh, don't get any background noise. <clears throat> So welcome, and uh, this uh, week I just start with something with you. As my screen looks little hanged now, it has come back. Okay. All right. So, uh, can, yeah, the, my screen was hanged for a minute, but uh, it is now okay. So, I hope uh, you you can uh, you can hear me. So, yeah, okay. All right. So, we will start with our uh, session today. Uh, so, first we start with sharing. Uh, my, uh, you know, what has happened uh, last week. Last week, uh, I have received a lot of feedback from many people that uh, they are feeling down or particularly um, uh, not physically not feeling well, some anxiety and even uh, purposeless uh, what is happening, you know, you know a little worried etc etc so uh, last uh, week before the full moon on the first there was a some planetary positions which makes things it was happened to everybody you are not alone in feeling that that kind of thing and uh, because of that earlier uh, on my birthday babaji has already sent that message beforehand that week basically that about the loving clarity. So you um, uh, you must have read that. Uh, also, it is uh, um, after that the transcript has been posted to the, my Facebook by my personal account, Rishi uh, Pragyananda Nubhuti account. You might have read that. So if not, you read it uh, again. So this, uh, the, there Babaji was explaining that many of us we are feeling and that particular time it was more from predominant to feel because of this planetary things that uh, purposelessness basically that uh, we don't see anything no clarity you know you feel that we are walking blindfolded that kind of feeling uh, came to many so that's why babaji has uh, particularly sent that message how to do it basically it is about not by doing, it is about the non-doing that make the things clear. 
So slowly, slowly, as we are progressing, we will be on the spiritual path. Spiritual path is about in the in the walking in the light of awareness, not doing. So more we progress, slowly, slowly, the doing part will be less and less, but the awareness part will go. But the awareness will not, uh, it will not be powerful unless until our physical body doesn't support it. Just I'm giving you the background to understand it. So that is why it is important to make our physical body okay. I'm not saying you need to be, you know, running 100 meters, uh, you know, joint sports or something like that. But you have to have some minimum level of physical fitness so that you can you can contain that high vibration like PEVF, what we already, uh, you know, mentioned earlier. And because of that, uh, last three weeks, I'm showing you the holistic exercise. Uh, you may be doing on your own. That is uh, some exercises. That is fine. But this holistic exercise, uh, we used to practice uh, when we started our spiritual journey uh, that about uh, 12 years back. So we did regularly those exercises. Uh, uh, I personally continued at five, six years initially of that uh, exercises. So that's why I thought better to share with you. These exercises will not make you uh, like uh, bodybuilding or muscle building or something like that, but it will just relax your the uh, physical body relax the joints and the muscles so it will it will be definitely it will help you to maintain a good health but it also support primarily to to have your body to go into the higher vibration which is needed for to sustain that level of uh, high level of awareness spiritual awareness and awareness and understanding, these are the two wings I already explained earlier. So more you grow up into this path, the physical part will go down. So if you do the holistic exercises and whatever Kriya you feel like doing, that should be enough. But more of the awareness, more into the awareness, more into the understanding, the understanding. Because without understanding, this knowledge is useless. You know, you, we are not saying blindly to follow something or read something and that's it. But you need to have your direct first-hand experience and then the understanding will settle. So that is equally important. So when you have this awareness and understanding of that, so what is happening, where we are going, what is uh, what we are trying to achieve, so here also, uh, you know, last week, uh, Sharmishta from Atlanta posted that uh, uh, the spirituality has uh, nothing to do with uh, any religion, some quotation. And this is what my the starting point of any workshop. I explained to that spirituality is nothing to do with any religion. There is no re disrespect to religion. People can follow any religion they like. But spirituality is not religion. Many religion, they have taken from spirituality and put so many practices into their religion. That is there. But reverse is not true. Spirituality has not developed from any religion. When the human being has been, has been um, uh, found, manifested, since then the spirituality is there. Because it is all about you connecting to your, so your own soul consciousness. So, in and so it is much, much before any structured religion has developed. In fact, uh, whatever originally the uh, the tribes were doing, they were more spiritual than any structured religion. You no, know, they have a better connection. They can because they are in the nature. They know how to connect. So that is the that is another thing. But anyway, so this is just a reminder that uh, our spiritual practices, it is independent of anything. It doesn't stop you to practice any religion. 
but at the same time don't confuse in this uh, spiritual practices with the religion and uh, and third part of now i'm coming back to the holistic exercises holistic exercises those exercises which help you to grow spiritually they will not they will be good for maintaining some healthy body but it will not require to uh, go into the extent that you need the physical bodybuilding and all these things. It, it, that is not the purpose. Okay. So, it, but it will maintain you some good health. So, I recommend you to practice. And the, the time, many are asking the when I should do and all this. The holistic exercises are normally do in the morning. Means if you practice 108 stomach breathing, it should be done before that. First holistic exercises, then stomach breathing. So that is that should be and then if you do any morning meditation it will follow after that first is the loosen up the body it will when you practice it will not take more than 10 minutes you know to do the all holistic exercises uh, so just loosen up your joint basically so and then you go into the uh, um, 108 stomach breathing which is also not take more than five minutes then followed by your meditation so that should be the thing and there is no fixed rule. You find out your own uh, method because by now we have learned many kriyas and uh, many techniques. So you find out which you require and accordingly you put it into your, uh, your schedule. And failing everything, if you are too busy, you can even um, do the full you know, exercises and other things in the weekends. And the weekdays you would do a minimum version. But at least that uh, the the feet, hand, and uh, thing, and the the other uh, the last part, which is a breathing part, you keep it at the weekend if you are not you must too much of uh, um, restricted with the time. So and the third part uh, already I posted uh, as I mentioned earlier, posted into the Facebook group, and the link has been posted into the Telegram. I hope all of you have seen that. So I'm not repeating that here. Just have a look at those exercises. These are the breathing exercises. And this kind of breathing exercises, it was originally developed by um, another master. His name is Yogi Tawariyaji. So he developed these techniques, holistic. As, as a holistic means it supports your the spiritual journey. So from the exercises, uh, what I posted already, if you have any question, you unmute and ask that question. Then we'll go to our regular practices. Guruji, can you please explain that uh, double when you chest and stomach both are used? Yes. Yeah. That is yeah. little uh, not very clear. All right. OK. OK. Hurry on. See, what happens is that it is called full breathing. So uh, because you know when the chest breathing, the the chest goes up or we inflate the chest and where the stomach breathing the belly goes out okay so here during inhalation only inhalation need to be put into two parts first part and second part exhalation need not to be touched only during medit uh, only during inhalation first you have to start there will be two hands one on the one on the chest another on the belly like that so first you, your the chest will be going up, half of that, like inhalation, first chest, then stomach and then down together. Like it is a half, it's like a wave, like first you have to inhalation only. Then when exhalation, both will go down. So that we call it a full breathing. Full and breathing means chest and then the belly. But it should start half, it will basically start with the chest and end with the belly. Because normally, normally when we inhale and we bring the chest up, the stomach yeah. goes in. Yes. But it here... Doesn't go out. It doesn't go out. Uh. That, that's correct. But you have to now break it into two parts. Two parts. Huh? Now, now clear. Yeah, start, start with chest and then you focus on the belly. After... Chest has gone up, then you focus on the belly. Understood now. Now understood. And let whatever happens, it happens. It's okay. Okay. You know, see, when inflating the chest, if the stomach also come a little bit out, it is okay. I'm not saying put stomach in. 
Okay. Understood. You need to focus your ship from chest, then bend. That's all. And whatever it is, you leave it there. Okay. Thank you. But if you, yeah, if you do some kind of, you can develop your own technique like your counts. Say, uh, sometimes you do, uh, say, the if it is a three is to two breathing, so okay, then the three will be on the uh, uh, inhale and two will be exhale. Okay, so you can divide it into, say, number uh, six. Total six uh, uh, numbers, so one, two, inhalation, so one, two, three, one, four, two, five. Three, one, two, three, four, chest. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, you finish the whole cycle. So when you do, see, one, two, three, then the chest comes up, you know, um, four, five, six, then belly comes out. Understood. And nine, ten, you release that, the exhalation. Okay, is that clear? It needs a little practice because it is a skill. It is not that uh, theoretical, so you need to practice it to experience that. Now okay. it is clear. Yeah, so if, for this, sometimes it will also help if you do little slower. If you do faster, then you miss it. You know, you, you, you feel like breathing is over, only chest, we are stuck in the chest. We could not get time to go to belly. This uh, only thing what you need to slow down. Okay, like... One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's slow down the whole cycle. Then you will be will uh, get enough time to have both. Okay. Correct. Thank you. So, anybody else has got any question on this? Rajdeep, I don't have a question on the exercise, but can I ask you a question about? what you, yes. you were talking about the spirituality religion part of it i, I don't want to go, go in details but since mm. religion has muddied the water right so started with the spirituality in the early years and mm. then came religion mm. must be some religious leader thoughts is an easier way to yeah. explain to the common people right mm -hmm. now since religion is instilled in the mind of some people so how yes. do we explain some spirituality to someone talking about connecting with you, some your um, soul or higher self or past life mm. ingrained in the religion which tells you there is no past life, there is no rebirth, right? How do you explain to them? Okay, just one minute, Shreval. Haryom, Haryom, can you please mute your microphone? Haryom. Okay, all right, Trevor, go ahead. Hmm. So my question is, this is based on my, like the other day, you know, Dan and lady was here. How do you explain mm -hmm. so somebody for so religion has already I'm not saying right in the wrong way, but they have mm -hmm. created the notion that there is no past life and, and there is no rebirth in some cases. Right. So how do you explain the spirituality back to someone who is so ingrained in the religion that this mm -hmm. doesn't exist in a past life There is no concept of higher self? How do you explain mm -hmm. spirituality back to them? OK. Um, so, well, good question. So, what I'm uh, just let me uh, reiterate that uh, this it is uh, you can only the way we deal with we share our experience. We don't preach anyone, you know, what they are supposed to do. Okay, they need not to believe anything. Basically, we are not responsible for others. So, it is not others who will drive our journey. Okay, so we have to share our experiences and leave it there. If they don't believe it, of, of course, fine. Everybody has a free will and choice. Okay, so that is already there. So we need to just share our story and understanding. It's up to them to accept or leave it. Okay, we are not there to make them convinced. 
okay so it is it is not necessary just leave it there you share that this is the this is what my understanding and leave it there this is the approach practical approach because see everybody in a different different uh, level of awareness so we awareness cannot be Im imported it needs to be developed and main issue about the the whole uh, thing why the humanity as a whole is not progressing because people are not willing to learn major issue i have might i am i'm sure i have shared earlier when it was studied that what was the blocks main issue is people are not open for learning and what we are we are, we are telling here we are not giving another concept we are saying that you have your own direct experience when you have experience you believe otherwise you don't believe both are okay hmm. and uh, this uh, i was uh, when i started talking today i was talking about some some other part also my on my spiritual uh, journey that i'm just giving my share now so um, the first on 30th of september one of the step of my uh, you know the spiritual jai because post enlightenment also a lot of thing comes and a lot of test comes and that comes actually how you handle with guru tatva so those things so baba ji has uh, you know given permission to start teaching others or initiate others in the first december when he appeared in uh, 2013 that i already i shared in my spiritual journey that article then there is a lot of thing happened and i have also been tested i'm just sharing with you there that whatever you can uh, in our management terms called milestone so that milestone was on 30th of september and that is over so i just uh, have been given by baba ji that i have passed that exam so maybe you will see a little bit different kind of me maybe some something will will teaching wise other way we will feel different okay from first october the new moon that has started hmm. because it is basically going to a next higher level and operating from there and in this there is a lot of test and other things so why i am bringing it here because uh, it is related to your question one of the thing is how do you handle the spiritual knowledge to somebody who are not willing to learn and for them basically you have to respect their will free will and let them move on they need not to agree to whatever whatever the truth or realized even even it is the truth but they are not ready for the truth just leave it there we are not responsible for anyone else our duty is to take the information or take that experience or sharing there take the message there don't bring the people here it is not to bring them here just give them enough information so that no if they are looking for something it is available here and that's it let their free will decide whether to come here whether to join this whether to you know uh, no more about it whether to learn anything etc etc leave it to them that's all yeah yeah so, you, you you could have benefited he talks to me about getting benefited to say for example the holistic exercises and all right so we keep talking about it but sometimes yeah. uh, i mean i feel like if he does the holistic exercise and then yeah. about for his anxiety related thing yeah but how do you explain the next phase when we do meditation connect with your mm -hmm. higher self connect with your you should be able to connect and pray to baba ji and to i explain to him that okay in instead of baba ji you can think about whoever you believe right that's yeah. another form of baba ji but mm -hmm. it's difficult right so for him to kind of get away from his religious belief and start believing into something that spirituality which started with right so yeah now there very well let me just uh, my advice here is here don't give an impression to practice it uh, he or she need to replace her belief system it will never happen just few minutes back whatever i said no matter what your religion you follow 
please continue to follow there is no contradiction here okay it is all about connecting with your own soul so you basically add something to your whatever belief system let the person later on decides that that may not be working this is working more but the moment you say you have to get drop your religious belief and put something new they will get scared nobody will do that okay and masters they know it okay see i'm just giving my as for example that i am giving lot of techniques but i never you have seen me that have you done this have you done this have you you know done this for whatever 108 stomach breathing have you done this exercise i never ask okay because i leave it to the free will who am i to you know impose something of somebody if you feel like you don't feel like that is also okay Okay, so okay. these are the masterly qualities. It is, it is not about teacher-student relationship that you you would, if you don't do do it you get punished. No, no punishment. Okay, because everybody working at their own pace. You know, from this uh, from master's point of view, only your path is longer. You know, we are there to help you. But if there is you you chose to take a longer path, you have full right to do so. We okay. cannot. Force you to do that. That comes from within. So we have to respect that and leave it there. It's okay. They don't accept it. It's fine. Okay. And okay. basically, you 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 may not see me that I'm I'm just arguing and establishing the points anywhere into other circles. There are many people write many things, you know. So, but I don't argue because it is not a matter of argument. it cannot be logically established it can be felt if somebody didn't didn't feel it who am i to establish reinstall the feeling in that no i have no capacity to do that so what best way is i am sharing my experience and same from somebody new we can share if somebody has suffering with alcoholism i i don't go and teach him you don't drink alcohol you know don't you don't know how bad it is i don't give a lecture i share my story how from the serious alcoholic last 10 years i didn't touch a single drop of alcohol that is my story i shared that and that is the truth nobody can contest maybe from my story he gets the clue and that the purpose is served not by lecturing not by putting some more rules and regulations nobody will accept okay sure thank you Right. Yeah. So, if they're interested, welcome. If they're not interested, leave them. It's okay. Fine. This is this is not our duty to put people into you know the, these things. Yeah. In then there is no disrespect to anyone anywhere. You know, it's we'll respect their decision. That's the way. But yes, you send once at least a message so that no, it is available here. That's all. You know, like make the horse thirsty and show him the pond. But if the horse doesn't go, it's okay. <laughs> and how to make the horse thirsty just share your own experience what life change happened within you say last 2 years or 3 years from that they may get the clue and they if they are interested they will come okay sorry uh, sorry i missed it you wanted to say something are you no no what i no i i did that i i was after the question i because there are some sound coming i requested you to mute the microphone that's what i was telling you okay okay sorry sorry guru no no it's okay thank you all right so now uh, if there is any other question on this so you can raise your hand and unmute and ask otherwise we'll start our uh, this uh, session today okay so uh, all right so we'll start so now sit straight keep your spinal cord your spinal cord straight face straight so before going into meditation i have been some message came i am just sharing with you um this is uh, this is about uh, 
that uh, for understanding that uh, this is all about what you faced last say one week time and when you start uh, reviewing your life that why you are not going looks like it's not going anywhere and all in that regard and uh, and many things we want in our life and, uh, and but we don't get so then we think that what is the purpose so what the spirituality and it is not you many have faced that so what good by the spirituality is doing in my life it is if it is not changing and thing like that that kind of thought might have came last week and uh, I told everybody to wait till first of uh, October after the new moon, then I will explain. So this I am just get reminded that I need to explain that to you now. One of them I already mentioned about the loving clarity, but I posted uh, before that week which on my birthday, that voice message and then followed by posting in the Facebook. Now I am now explaining that why we don't get something what we want in our life, even though we progress in our spiritual path. Okay. To understand that, you might uh, remember that originally I have been, uh, I'm just basically my teaching is all about the stomach breathing, raise your vibration, raise your vibration, raise your PVF and all. And also the brain wave, we told go to the gamma, etc. All those exercises are aiming at so that you can manifest things what you want in your life because in the lower vibration it will not get manifested that is the number one number two is the understanding how universe is working with us because universe doesn't understand that uh, you know uh, what you really desire or you know what what you are wanting it understands your frequency so frequency is the starting point of that without raising your vibration nothing will get attracted to you okay so that's that is the thing that if you focus on vibration everything else will be taken care of your situation of your life will improve you will your clarity of your mind will improve you will be operating well you get more detached from that all this uh, you know whatever happening all around you and you get full control over you and all these kind of things and thirdly i like to share your one story so that you understand how it works the science behind this the science behind this uh, guruji uh, the prem nirmal uh, he has given a very nice quotation that uh, um, and that quotation is about that universe will not give you whatever you desire. It will give you whatever you deserve. Okay, so it is. it means that desire is not good enough. Your deserving capacity needs to go up so that you can you can get it. You can manifest it. So this has been you know, talked in a, uh, one story so that you understand. Suppose, say one four-year-old child is coming and asking mother, say, mama, give me money for uh, chocolate. Okay, so mommy gives, say, five rupees or ten rupees. So he goes and buys one chocolate, you know. So then he, he is satisfied. So next, if he comes back, and in comes back and ask him, mama uh, so he knows that so another day he comes give mama i have a better chocolate i saw it is 20 rupees can you give me 20 rupees mama give 20 rupees so the child get that that chocolate he wants and very happy now third day is coming he says uh, mama give me 50000 rupees i have a apple iphone i need to purchase i i need to get it i want it do you think the, the his mother will give that 50,000 rupees to four-year-old child? Okay, so the same uh, because mother knows what you deserve. Even though you don't know what you deserve, whatever you deserve, it will be given. 
So to get that, maybe the same child when he you know studied and goes into the college and say become 18 years old, maybe that time he comes back with an Apple phone, maybe the mother will give that. The same. So that child, when he grown up and become deserve that phone, he will get it that time from the same source. So your to get something, your deserving capacity needs to go up, not your want, not your desire. It will not happen. Just like four years old child, he didn't get that fifty thousand rupees. Same way. If you work on that, you get your deservingness. It will it will be given. So, what is the learning of this story? For this, what you want in your life, your deserving capacity need to go up, so that you can attract that into your life. But if you don't work on your deservingness, only work on your desire, it will not happen. Universe doesn't understand your desire. <clears throat> it gives as per your capacity capacity to handle okay so that is that is the main reason i go back to my original point all this thing about pva 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 because of that first thing i teach anyone who comes to me 180 stomach breathing okay what it does it enhance your vibration cellular vibration and that is a starting point attracting more or you can say like i have often given a you know example of cooking like you the pot or the pan where you are cooking that need to be heated up otherwise cooking is not possible no preparation can be made if the pot itself is a cold so all ingredients are there there is a no dart of the ingredients for cooking, says so the vegetables are correct, oil is correct, and the salt and other whatever all uh, turmeric masalas are correct. But your pan is not, you know, heated enough. Then no cooking is possible. It will take years, but no cooking will come because the the pan is not heated enough. So starting point of the cooking is start heating the pan. If required, preheat the pan so that cooking get faster and you get the results very faster. I just got reminded and thought to better to share with you before we go into our session. All right. So with this understanding, so we will start. So this is a part of understanding. You remember one is awareness, another understanding. This is the understanding how you can get what you want in your life. For that, you have to start working on increasing your deserving capacity, not desire. And if you like to put me into the spiritual perspective, desire comes from mind. Deserving capacity is a spiritual quality. That attracts. Not, not the mind construct. Mind construct has no capacity to earn something from the universe. Okay, so that's why we are working on that so that things get sorted out on its own. No. <coughs> And if you like me to go further one step higher, when we actually in increase our PVF, we also understand by asking something, we limit it. So all spiritual, whoever evolved spiritually, they don't ask a particular thing. They ask what is in the best interest for me. I'm open to receive that. Leave that to the mother, basically. Mother knows exactly what you need and how much you can handle and you will be given that. Okay, so suppose you, you deserve something much, much better, but you ask for little, you will get little in that level. Okay, so then that is that is the final way forward for, for this into this one. So getting all that and clarity is needed as well as deserving capacity is needed. Okay. And uh, and everywhere that is there is uh, something called the impatience come from the mind so also there are some of the things may take time in our level higher dimension there is no time that gives instantly but to implement the trickle down into this reality also it takes time or may take time so we have to have that quality of patience 
is called titiksha, not pratiksha. Pratiksha is waiting with expectation. Titiksha is waiting without expectation. That is a spiritual quality, titiksha. So that, that is what we need to be in. And we have to trust that divine will give, the divine mother will give whatever we deserve at the divine time. Okay. All right. So we'll start our exercises, uh, not exercises, or the, or the first, we'll start with Om chanting and Guru Vandana. Then uh, uh, we'll do the Kriya and in Kriya in two mudras. First, we'll be doing the Pran Mudra, seven rounds, and then Shikhar Mudra, seven rounds, and followed by six step meditation. All right. Okay. It's straight. Breathe in and breathe out. Relax yourself. Now take a deep breath in for Om Chanting. Uh... Tatpadam darshitam yena Tashmai shri guruve namaham Agyana timirandhasya Gana jana shalakaya Chakshuran militam yena Tashmai shri guruve namaham Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Shakshat Param Brahma, Tashmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Tashmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Tashmai Shri Guru Venamaha. Let's all seek blessings of Mahavatar Babaji, Mataji, Amar Jyoti Ji, Guruji Prem Nirmal, Guru Mahavarati Nirmal, and all the masters of Guru Mandala who are constantly guiding us and helping us to grow in the spiritual path. Their blessings, we shall start our first round of Kriya in Pran Mudra. The first round start. Second round, start. <clears throat> Third 
third round start. Fourth round, start. <clears throat> Fifth round, Start. <clears throat> Sixth round, start. Seventh round, start. <clears throat> Be in this position for some time and feel the vibrations within. Now come to Shikhar Mudra on your lap the thumbs up and all fingers are in, both hands on your lap. In Shikhar Mudra, first round, start. Second round, start. Third round, start. Fourth round, start.
fifth round start. Sixth round, start. Seventh and last round, start. Now be in this mudra for some time and focus on your spinal cord. Now come to Chin Mudra and get ready for six step Nirmal Dhyan. First step Anapan Sati Dhyan. Follow your own breathing process. Breathing will flow normally. Only thing, you have to watch the breathing. You have to be aware of the breathing.
purpose of breath awareness is to bring your mind at the present moment. All spiritual experiences happen only at the present moment. That is the only reality. Whatever we consider as our past memories, our future, those are all mind projections. Those are all mind game. Only reality is the present moment. All spiritual journey begins at the present moment. It cannot happen if the mind is fluttering between the past or future. And the technique to bring our mind to present moment is engage it with the breathing. So we cannot follow the breathing that we took yesterday. Neither we can follow the breathing what we are going to take tomorrow. Moment you are bringing focus on our breathing, our mind automatically comes in the present moment. And the channel for our spiritual journey opens up here. Now the second step, Kaya Upasana. Scan your body from bottom of your feet till top of the head and feel all the sensations within your body. Once you finish at the top of the head, go back again in the bottom of the feet and start the next round. Like that, you can do several rounds of scanning. If you feel any discomfort anywhere or little pain or anything, you focus there. Keep your focus steady there and breathe in and breathe out three to five times. 
because where your attention is, energy will go there. So by breathing in, you are inhaling pranic energy that will go there. Any kind of disease or pain caused because of the loss of pranic energy. So you give more prana, it will get healed. And while exhalation, you intend that whatever caused that pain or block, negativity going out from your system. You repeat this process few times. If there is more than one point, do it one after another. Same process, process you repeat to the second and third and onward. Now, third step, Chitta Pasana. Watch your thoughts with aloof attention. This is a practice of witnessing. So you are not in the thought you are away from your mind space and watching your mind. What is going on in your mind? So from that perspective, watch your thoughts. You are an observer of the thoughts. Do not try to analyze or label any thought. Let it come whatever it is. Just watch them.
if you get carried away with any thought, the moment you realize, just watch your breathing again like a first step. Center yourself and start watching from the next thought in your mind. Now, we have to increase our alertness and continuously aware of these thoughts at different stages. When it enters our mind space, when it is passing through our mind, the content, and where it ends, and after one thought ends, the and next thought has not entered yet, there is a gap, so you have to be aware of that gap, and then next thought enters. Whole process, continuously, we have to be alert at each and every point. So this is the fourth step called Nirantar Upasana. Like continuous alertness, full alertness. And here our more emphasize will be to be in the gap between two thoughts. Now, fifth step, Sandhikal Jagruta. Here, like you have given the continuous alertness to the thought, 
here you have to give similar continuous alertness of the whole breathing cycle. How air is getting into your nostril through as an inhalation and one particular point it stops then again comes out in an exhalation. So where it momentarily stops that is called Sandhikal. So you have to be aware of that turning point. There is a, another turning point at the end of exhalation and beginning of inhalation, which is outside the body. So you have to be aware of both these two points. And the way to catch these two points is to be aware of the breathing cycle continuously with no gap. Only then we'll be able to capture it perfectly. So be aware of the whole breathing cycle and capture this Sandhika. Sandhikal is doorway to next higher dimension. When you are aware of that Sandhikal, the doorway automatically opens up. And we enter into the pranic dimension, energy dimension. So to enter into that dimension, only you have to be aware of the Sandhika. It is like standing in front of a sliding door of a mall. You need to be just be aware, present there, door will automatically open up and you enter. And when you enter, the whole environment will change.
Mataji came here and blessing us. Mataji is giving an analogy of this particular step. Just like in the metro station, you have to put the ticket or pass the card and the door opens to get into the metro station. Here, Mataji is saying you have to pay your attention to get in. If you're already there in that energy dimension and feel the difference, the peaceful, blissful, loving environment, you be there. If you're not sure, I'm now requesting Mataji to take all of us there. I shall reverse count 10. When I'll say zero, all of us will be there. So get ready. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Feel the expansion. Feel the ocean of love. Feel the light of joy.
Now the next step, expanded awareness state, Vistarit Jagruta. We shall expand our awareness starting from our heart. Focus on your heart and feel the heartbeat internally. This is also known as Hridayupasana. And during this time, you can put your hands in Hridaya Mudra, the pointing finger touching the root of the thumb and middle finger and ring finger touching the thumb and little finger out. So this is Hridaya Mudra and then put it on your lap. If you are not sure or don't remember, continue with Chin Mudra. Now come back to Chin Mudra and we go into the next step of awareness of how our physical body is interacting with the external environment. Feel our feet are feeling where the feet are kept. Feel where you are sitting. Feel where your hands are resting. Feel what is at your backside. Feel the air coming and touching your skin. Feel whether there is any sensation at top of your head, Shastra area. At the same time, be aware of your breathing. Now refresh all these awarenesses. You can make rounds like you did at second step during Kaya Upasana. Here, all these, whatever we mentioned, be aware of that. In several rounds, the purpose is to aware of these points at the same time. At this state, it is possible to be aware of all these points at the same time. It is called multi-point awareness. And the technique 
to do that is make several rounds, quick rounds of being aware of all these points. Now expand your awareness away from your body with the help of sounds. Listen to all sounds around you. Now listen to all the sounds within your room. including my voice coming to you, maybe the sound of a fan or AC or anything. Now rotate the awareness 360 degree and expand it further. You go outside the room, the other rooms in your house, and keep rotating and expanding. Go beyond your house. And listen if any sound is coming from outside the house. Then go further and further, maybe some traffic sound coming from some road and keep expanding. Expand in further and further. It can go up to infinite in all directions. And this is the state of expanded awareness state. Or Shiva Vapti state. This is the state of your higher self, true self, or soul consciousness, whatever name you call it. It is truly you.
at this level you are infinitely powerful you have access to all the knowledge all spiritual masters they operate from this level all higher dimensional masters they communicate at this level at this level your past birth information or your soul's future plans are accessible your karmic files can be seen at this level just maintaining at this level is self healing so now explore your inner world at this level and have direct first hand experiences there shall be no verbal instructions from my side for next few minutes you just go with your inner feeling and explore wherever it takes you
All right. Now rub your palms together and put them on your closed eyes. You have a specs, you just remove the specs. Now after holding it on your eyes, I'm counting 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now slowly give this energy to all over your face and body. And if you like to send the healing energy to someone, intend that person is in front of you and then bless him or her. If there is a more than one person, then do it one after another. Now we shall be doing Shanti part for global peace and harmony and earliest recovery from the pandemic. Om Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Om Sarve Bhavan to Sukino Serve Santo Niramaya Serve Vadrani Pashantu Marcus Chit Dukahagave Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Oh, Mangalam. That completes our session today. Thank you, Guruji. Okay. Thank you. God bless. God bless you. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you so much. Wonderful session. God bless you. Thank you, Rasdeep. Thank you, Rasdeep. Pranam, Thank you. Guruji. Pranam, Pranam. Thank you, Rasdeep. Thank you. Thank you, Rasdeep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll conclude our session now. God bless you all. Om Mangalam. Thank, Thank you, Rasi.